Lady Camel owner or simply an adoring camel fan, you're in the right place for some fun, useful and interesting camel talk. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. We're your hosts, I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. Join us here for fun learning about camels, how to care for, train and handle them, plus insider stories and interviews. And also some interesting stories of our lifestyle with camels, the good, the bad, the ugly and the very funny. Make sure you've subscribed now so you don't miss out on an episode. podcasts are an audio take of our video so be sure to check those out on our blog for lots of how-to visuals and of course lots of camels this is your one and only go-to podcast all about camels Welcome back to the Camel Connection podcast. Hello, how are we all going? It's Tara here. And Russell here. And we have a very special episode for you today mm-hmm. because... Aren't they all? Well, this one's extra special. Okay, this yeah, one's extra special. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, because today's topic is going to be all about camels. <laughs> <laughs> just for something different. <laughs> no, well, guys, World Camel Day is coming up on the 22nd of June. I don't know mm. when you're listening to this. Maybe June 22nd of June's been. Maybe it's coming. Um, mm. But we're posting this a few days in advance to the 22nd of June because we have um, some really special stories that we want to share with you today. Absolutely. We put out a bit of a call out. We did. We put out a call out for World Camel Day. Um, World Camel Day, if you Google it, it actually um, basically is a day um, recognised worldwide as a worldwide thing, you know, because you can have things in different countries, but this one particularly is recognised worldwide. And it's just basically highlighting how camels have an impact on human lives, mm. basically. Yeah, for sure. But they I th- certainly have adjusted our lives. Well, going back to that, it mainly refers to production, like milk and wool and transportation and things like that. But today's episode, we're not going to focus on those things because a lot of people are aware that there is camel products. And if you're not, well, you know, you are now. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, there's a lot of really uh, amazing things that are happening with um, camel products, if you like, that's happening around the world. Um, You know, of course, we've uh, been involved with a couple of the dairies here in Australia. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, and what they're doing is absolutely phenomenal, and um, you know, kudos to all the hard work and efforts that they're putting in. Mm-hmm. Um, but around the world, I mean, you know, like wow, if you actually Google and have a good look at uh, some of the the dairies they got over in the UAE and um, other places around the place, you know, it's just phenomenal. Mm. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, Loads of great things are happening. There's lots of room for expansion, but at the same time, there's lots of great things happening behind the scenes. Mm. But our focus today, we really want to focus on the individual stories that you probably won't hear unless you were listening to this podcast. Um, the stories that how camels make such a massive impact on people's individual lives, um, mental health wise, um, you know, business wise. All of those things, like just the, like, oh, I suppose I'm stuttering because I just think of the impact that camels have made on my life to the point where knowing that the World Camel Day is coming up and I've I've been telling you, Russell, for over a year now that I need to write a book. Yeah. I need to write a book. And you're like, what's it going to be about? I'm like, I don't know, but I need to write a book. Mm. I need to write a book. Mm. <laughs> And it was only, I think, when we got back from Western Australia, doing our camel courses over there, maybe the change of scenery, whatever it was, um, I'm just like, I now I know what I need to write about. And what might that be? How I became a camel lady. Okay. I don't really like the word camel lady. It sounds a bit like, kind of like I'm precious. <laughs> Okay. Like, you know, like I've got manners. <laughs> oh, right. No, 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 that's not going <laughs> But it will be a story about the evolution of, of how I never even dreamt, thought about having camels in my life and how camels found me and how the, how my life has turned completely upside down 
gone around the block five million times, you know, turned from colours black to white to purple to green. Like, it's just completely made my life very, very colourful. Um, and, you know, when you have a, when you do something, you often think there's a reason, like, rather than just go, well, this is happening and this is life and isn't life a bitch or whatever, I'm sort of more on the line of, well, this story this is this has happened and this is now a story because it's it's in the past and it's time to share it. Mm. Like I did. actually think that most of the camel people around the world, certainly the ones that we've um, come across, <laughs> across with, um, they they've had previous lives. Yeah. Uh, there's not too many really that are born into it, like the you know, mm. family business or anything like that. I mean, there's a number, but not too many very, very compared minimal. to. Um, um, people who, you know, have had a change of career or, you know, that somehow camels have slipped into their life. Like and you with your book. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right yeah, you, why yeah. you wrote a story well, about it. Wrote, yeah, and it's what's the name of your book? Camel Man Dreaming, <laughs> as you, in case if you didn't know. Um, it is out there on Amazon. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, from you know, a, a life of education and teaching and, uh, and then to um, camels and... Know, so you're kind of in that. a similar boat to me as camels found you. They well, they did through an indirect way. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. same here. But I mean, you know, there are. I mean, as I said, I mean, you know, there are people who are actually born into it, and this is their family business. It mm. probably has been in many countries for, for thousands of years mm. too, um, or at least hundreds anyway. So we've got some really great stories that uh, people have uh, written to us about uh, their camel stories. Yeah, and and this is going to be from a. a spiritual heart-centered kind of uh, deep love and 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 a deep feel of who the camel is mm. these stories are, are about that we've selected them specifically for for this podcast to recognize camels for more than just the industry that they can produce because that's that's a great thing don't get me wrong but at a deeper level this is why we do what we do is because camels are, are not are, are, can be your companion in all the wonderful ways whether you're going through highs in life or lows in life mm. um and that that's some stories we're going to read so yeah for yeah. sure and of course i mean these are just some oh the yeah there's so know. many it's just it's ridiculous amounts of uh, stories out there that uh, you just <laughs> know, it'll be a lifetime just telling the stories that's right yeah. So, okay. Okay. So let's get into this. Okay. Um, there's some awesome people that have written back to us. So we'll take in turns reading the stories, and um, I'll start with with this first story from Muhammad mm -hmm. Musafa, um, who is from Egypt, but he currently lives in the UAE, working as a veterinarian. And he says, dealing with camels daily, I've learned a lot from these beautiful animals. They have so much patience and a high endurance and a domestic Camel knows his friend and will never forget him. Oh, gee, that's that's <laughs> such a powerful statement yeah. because that's so true. And as a veterinarian, he's seen that too. Yeah. Um, camel milk and camel urine treat many diseases due to the herbal nature of the camel's food and its grazing. As Muslims, we consider the camel a special animal as they helped our grandparents by providing milk and wool and transportation. Um, and then, of course, he says, here are some photos and there's gorgeous photos of, you know, camel selfies and him with a baby and him with, you know, a larger camel. And um, it just, like, just reading his words when that email came through, I could actually feel his deep passion for these animals. And the fact that he says that a domestic camel knows his friend and that camel will never forget him as a friend really reminded me of the training that we offer and why we offer the training that we offer, the Camel Connection Trust-Based Camel Training, mm. is because we are trying to build a relationship. We are building relationships with camels and they are like elephants and they never, ever forget. Mm. It's the focal point of what we do, really. I mean, like, you know, you've got all the techniques of um, training, um, which, um, you know, you could write into a book. Um, but uh, whether or not you get the feeling from that yeah. uh, of uh, that connection, and that's the reason why we do what we do. And I think it's quite profound yeah. also that um, camels are so interested in building that connection with you. Absolutely, and yeah. that's that's what we're all about. Hey, we're like, hey, let's facilitate that for people. Yeah. Um, you know, we've done this enough times to know how to facilitate that, and that's what we do that's in our it. courses. 
Yeah, so I've got an interesting one here from, um, now pardon me for, maybe I might get this name wrong, but um, Major Monurik. Mm -hmm. um, he's a gentleman from, um, lives in Iran. And, uh, and of course, that's a camel culture over there as well. Yeah. A very strong one. Um, okay, so I'll get into this. I live in Iran and I have not started to raise a camel yet, but I am very interested in this. In Iran, camel breeding traditionally handed down from father to child. Yeah. All right, so that's, you know, like, I mean, people being born into the camel culture. And here's a gentleman who's wanting to get into it. Yeah, okay, and it's kind so of like they've got no option. It's like, hey, this is, besp what is that word, bestoked, bestoked upon you. You know, like, this is your destiny. Is Bequeathed. To is it? No, there's bestoke. Bestoke, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, in Iran, camels are grown up as free herds in the desert, and each time the owners separate a number of them from herds and bring them to the villages and offer them for sale. Interestingly, this animal is referred to as specific name among traditional breeders of any age, referring directly to its life. To directly, uh, referring, I think what he's supposed to say is referring the camel directly to life itself. Oh, to life, yes. Which yes. is, it's like, yes. hey, I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah, no, get that. Um, in Iran, there are both single humps and two humps. Now, I did not know that. I didn't know that either. No, so that's... I did not know that. Yeah, there we go. And lives in a vast geographical area from north to south and east to west. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, the whole country. Mm. Oh, the sound of it. I am a Muslim, and in our religious book, the Quran, it refers to the camel and the elders. Um, they have also advised us on the variety of products processed and obtained from this wonderful animal. According to my beliefs, the works that are directly benefits from God are much more useful, such as farming and breeding animals, among which the camels are best. <laughs> Their stool, urine, fat and wool of this animal have therapeutic properties among the indigenous people. And it's not just over there. Mm. There's many cult cultures around the world, um, camel we'll cultures. say something after that when that. you finish, because we get a lot of questions about that. Yeah. And then the city of... If Oh, it's, it's Van Han. It's Van Han, yeah, which is a tourist centre. They use camel bones in handicrafts. Now, I've actually seen some of that sort of stuff. Yeah, me uh, too. In my world travels. I met you on the internet, enjoyed all the information that was shared with the people of the world. Thank you thousands of times. Aww. So, yeah, That's so gentleman sweet. from Iran, he's wanting to get into the camels. He recognises how beautiful and magic they are. Mm. And uh, naturally, come World Camel Day, I'm sure he'll be um, somewhere out there and uh, celebrating the camel with some of his There are mates. a lot of people out there who appreciate the camel a lot and don't have camels, you know. Oh, yeah. And I appreciate those people because... Um, of course, I appreciate camel owners as well, but they they want to do something. They're they're plotting and planning on how to make that achievable for themselves. Because I mean, you know, it's it's probably not advisable just to quit your day job and start camels. No, <laughs> no, no, that's not advisable. <laughs> you know, like, but people make plan. Like oh, some people, some clients we've met, they have structured the whole next fifteen, ten, fifteen years of their life. Mm -hmm. On this, you know, maybe they're planning a camel journey. Maybe they want to start a business. Like they're just whole lives are planned around camels. And well, that, I mean, you know, that's also, really touching. Also, I mean, you know, I've had clients in the past uh, who and are still very much in contact with us who live in suburbia. So mm. no chance whatsoever of owning camels in suburbia. <laughs> we uh, did have an elevation. What but, is it? Elevator talk. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Camel and um, elevator. But uh, you know, clearly have this massive interest in camels um, and anything about camels and I know this one particular lady um, who we've, um, you know, we're in contact with um, and she's in contact with us um, and, and she's come out trekking as well um, but her house is uh, full of uh, camel paraphernalia <laughs> and uh, anything about camels you know she goes wildly excited about mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of people out there that have this affinity with the animal mm. but aren't necessarily in the position to be mm. able to own an animal and um, we've had many people that have 
maybe thought, okay, well, I'm, I know I'm never going to own a camel, but I'm going to come on your treks, I'm going to yeah. do your courses, and I'm going to come international with well, you. Well, look how many veterinarians are not going to own a camel, mm. but they've come on our course. Yeah, to learn about wow. them, which is just amazing. Mm. Mm. Um, but going back to the camel urine, the question we get asked a lot is, well, or, or it just happens to slip out in conversation because it's such an interesting topic, mm. is what's the deal with camel urine? Mm. Um, look, I, I believe every culture is different, but some of the stuff I've heard is is that um, some traditional cultures believe that it can cure thing any cancers. In particular, I've heard liver cancers and things like that. Um, so they will drink it. I don't know if it's raw if they drink if they drink it warm. I don't know those things. Or but the results of such uh, we've, administering such a, a drink... It really is, but, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're not up with that sort of uh, thing, but well, we've certainly heard about it. We don't practice it. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I'd probably be willing to get give it a go if the opportunity arose, um, but I'm not going to go out and, like, you know, catch some urine off my camels. <laughs> no, and afterwards she's going to gargle with Listerine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but the interesting thing is, is we have been contacted several times mm. in Australia mm. from people who have come from these cultures that believe camel urine is uh, is medicine and they've offered $40 a litre. Mm. So there you go, people. Mm. And people are like, oh, my God, why don't you jump onto that? I'm like, well... I'm not chasing around a camel. I'm in my bucket on <laughs> I can tell you that now. Oh, it's, I mean, trying to get that past the health authorities. Hey, we want to sell camel piss. Yeah, <laughs> so, all right, you can get that in Queensland. It's called 4X. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, how can you come Sorry, Queenslanders. Like, oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> A lot of stuff now. Okay. So um, if you want to give us feedback, you can email us at we don't receive feedback at Camel Commission. <laughs> uh, but if those who are wondering what Forex is, it's actually a beer that's Queensland made and mm. Queenslanders tend to love it. Mm. I have tasted it once or twice and I don't know what camel pee t- tastes like, but apparently it tastes like camel pee. I don't know. So somebody Never somewhere tastes like camel pee, so came up with that. <laughs> Okay, right, we've got, oh, this one here, you can read this one out. I am going um, to. So yeah. we've we got a beautiful email from Coralie Lemure from France. Mm. France. Mm. Been following her for a long time. Um, following, like, on w- social w- media. W- on social media. Yeah. yeah, been following her for a long time. She does some pretty amazing things. I'm pretty impressed. You know, but I love it when you get emails like this because you can see and follow someone on social media for so long and then they send an email like this and I'm like, I had no idea. Mm, mm. So email is not dead people. <laughs> no, but also it also shows that uh, social media uh, doesn't necessarily tell the true story or the real story or the whole story. Yeah, and, mm. I, and this... Uh, Coralie, I think you should write a book, um, yeah, so absolutely. please do that and consider that. I know you're only young, so you've got a few years to think about it because <laughs> I know when I was your age, I was like, I want to write a book, but I didn't know what about. Um, but I, I want to jump in, jump into Coralie's story, who's from France, mm. and she says, Hi, Tara Russell. Camels just changed my life. When I was younger, I was very shy to the point that some people thought I was mute. My mother brought some camels when I was 14 years old and of course my curiosity and and of course by curiosity all our neighbours were coming to see them. At this point I had to speak a bit but it wasn't easy for me. We started a business with camels and so I really had to explain to customers how amazing camels are. My passion for camels made me push through my limits to the point that I, I went to meet people all over the world. I even travelled to Australia with the most limited English, but doesn't matter which language you speak when you can speak camel. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Then my life changed, 19 years old, travelling the world to meet cameliers, experienced and new ones. Everything is easy when you have a passion behind you. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. TV production uh, teams came to my home to report my activities with camels, which which is a very strange thing in France. And in front of the cameras, I still needed my camels beside me to be able to speak. Mm. I'm now 24 and I'm actually working on a big camel farm project. Mm. And to be able to present it to my banker, I still have to imagine my lovely camels all around me. Wow. She says, she laughs out loud. Mm. Um, they have some, the camels have something very magic that makes you feel relaxed. They are so strong but gentle and smart as hell. Mm. <laughs> Camels don't judge you. They take you as you are. They feel they they feel yourself better than you can feel yourself and have much more patience than anybody. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. that they can feel yourself better than you they do they know you so much better than you know yourself um i used to say that i think cat I used to say that I think camel, speak camel, live camel to my new customers. They, they don't understand it in the beginning, but after a few months owning their own camels, they begin to understand. How, how, how many times has that come about, you know, with us as well? Yeah. You know, they, they really get to understand these animals. Yeah, even over the years of meeting you, and I didn't fully understand it, but I knew it was something I wanted to explore. Mm. And then I have, and it's just taken over my life. Mm. Um, and then she continues on. I introduced camels in my family. No, I introduced camels into a family having autistic kids or any kind of troubles and always amazed by the way the whole family is improving their dialogue. Mm. They make me feel proud of my job, proud of them and push me to go forward. In my hard days, I used to sit behind, beside my bull camel and speak to him. If I start to cry, he just left me alone. He taught me to fight my feelings because it isn't a depressed state that will change your condition. I could speak and write out. I could speak and write hours about camels, but this text is already a mess as a herd of cam camels escaping from danger. So I will stop there. Happy Camel Day, and looking forward to read your next emails. Wow. That is so beautiful. I'm a, I'm a bit teared up, actually. Yeah, too, right. <laughs> no, no, it's an amazing story, and, you know, obviously it's only... Uh, it's a continuing story. Yeah. No, and it's not one that's finished by many measure of the stick. You know, and it just goes back to what we were saying before, is that camels will be there for you through, for you through the highs and lows, and one significant thing that I've realised... Um, and I wrote about on my blog, com. if you want to go read it, about how um, our our camel, Sahid, who died from old age recently, how he had impacted me on a spiritual level. Mm. Um, and I called him my main man because he was like my guru. He taught me what it was like to, to feel... Um, <sighs> Love, really, like that's the only word I can think of. I tried, folks. I did try. <laughs> you could, I mean, <laughs> but, you know, but you could call it love. You could call it God. You could call it Allah. You could call it all of the things. Mm. But um, the, this one moment that I had with him um, was a significant moment for me that just transported me into into who we truly are. I believe who we truly are as humans. But if you'd like to read that um, that story. Um, it's sort of I tried to make a poetic story just to honour Sahid and his um, amazing presence in in my life, and I know he was too. Um, you can read that over at my blog, tar my personal blog, taralielife dot com. So yeah, that's going back to Coralie's story, just about how we start. Sometimes we can start at a real low in life, and then an animal like a camel can just impact us to the extent that it helps us just come into our full potential. Mm. I mean, yeah, I didn't know I'd be doing this yeah, you know, no, seven years sure. ago. Look, you know, I, and I sort of think about her story there and obviously there's more to it Yeah, and, uh, and it's <laughs> continuous. Um, but it's interesting, you know, that, uh, you know, camels came into her life, it changed her life and now she's wanting to help other people mm -hmm. to, um, through the camels and the interaction with camels and the connection, if you like, um, with camels um, to help other people with mm -hmm. their lives. And that was actually something which, I mean, you know, when we first met, you and I, um, Tara, um, that, um, you know, I did say that... Um, you know, I want information and knowledge and skills and all that sort of stuff to be shared um, and how to do it, I didn't really know um, because they had changed my life and, uh, you know, for other people who were interested then, you know, don't have to be scared of the animal. Mm. Um, you know, there, there are ways and means around it and that's how come, I suppose, we are where we are now mm. Mm. Um, and helping people to be introduced to the camel, um, to recognise the person within mm -hmm. um, and uh, and to be able to handle and manage them, you know, safely mm. is the, the key. And, you know, like something that's occurred to me in our seven years of, of doing this together so far, teaching and educating people. Has it been that, seven years? Yeah, I think, yeah. No, it I, I think it's coming up mm. in a month or so. Mm. Um, is that I, I kind of consider camels as a religion. 
Because, mm. it, like, you think of something like Christianity, right? You've got you've got your Christians who have had a massive impact from from God Himself or Jesus or what have you, mm. and then over here you've got camels who they've impacted somebody's life in a massive way. Mm. Some of the Christians will go on to share their stories and to preach their stories and to you know, write books and whatever. Some of the camel people will go on to share their stories and preach their stories mm. and what have you. Some mm. of the Christians will just keep will just feel that that's a sacred thing to them and just think, okay. This this is mine. I, 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 I've experienced this. I own it. It's impacted my life. And that's enough. And that's enough, you know. Mm. And the same in the camel world that the, some people will not go to share their stories. Mm. And, um, I mean, that, that's something that really interests me about putting out this call out is that I really thought there'd be more people mm. that contacted us. But I, I often think that people sometimes think their stories don't matter. Mm, but They're they like, do. oh, it's just, you know, they just came into my life and, mm. you know, I've had wonderful moments, but it's nothing fancy. Everyone has them. It's not true. I mm. think that from doing the many camel courses that we've done, mm. everybody has a different experience with the camel. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one from a lady who's uh, dear in our hearts. Um, <laughs> well, the, okay. I'll, I'll well, have to d- you... do a disclaimer here because... Uh. Um, we are not biased here, by the way. Like we do, no. we we have. But we do know her very well. We've only got this is the one client that we do have. Well, we have many clients, but this particular client is her only story in this in this episode. Mm. All the others, we've only had you know virtual contact. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to, I, everyone to know that we're not biased. These aren't no, all clients. No, so not all yeah. Clients. No, no, no. But anyway, yeah, dear to our heart, and uh, we met um, Michelle Phillips uh, from Camel Milk, New South Wales. Uh, quite some years ago now, um, I remember the very first phone call. Um, I was sitting in the car. Um, well, that's a quiet spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a quiet spot, and um, I just dropped off um, Charlotte, our daughter, um, at the bus stop yeah. for, to her going to school. Or it and could have I been kinder. <laughs> answered, uh, no, that was uh, it was a school, and anyway. Um, uh, yeah, I sat in the car, it was raining, um, down in Painesville, in Victoria, in, in Australia, and um, I answered her phone call, uh, she texted I think, and uh, anyway we had a big long conversation for about an hour. Um, about know, her dreams, her about hopes, her dreams and about hopes and her, she, her need to she, want to save the camel basically. Yeah, and start a business and mm. uh, you know get things happening and how to go about things. So. Um, that was the very beginnings of our relationships with Michelle Phillips from Camel Milk in New South Wales. Okay, so this is what she's written to us. My life changed forever when I came home with my first 11 camels saved from the meatworks. I've been able to create lifelong friends and a career that has taken my Camel Milk products all over the world. All right, so she's worked hard, mm. we know that. And, uh, and has had uh, you know, success. Talking to families that have shared personal problems with me and being able to help has really made my head spin. So I'm assuming she's talking about the, her products have helped, you know, because, for instance, the soap can help with a lot of skin conditions and things like that. Totally, mm. yeah. I've had some really touching moments and my camel, with my camels as I've worked on myself and my camels on breaking down the barriers. I have learned that anything is possible when you put your heart into it. Don't listen to what other people tell you what you can and can't do. (laughs) Uh, She has repeatedly said this to Mm, us, mm. repeatedly. Um, When you have confident people around you that know what they are doing, then you're on the right path. All right, so, um, and, and, then she, and says, then she says in, in brackets, I fully recommend Tara and Russell's training program to anyone and their camels. Thanks, yeah. Michelle. Um, and she says thanks so much. Now, I, I think with Michelle, I mean, you know, she, she um, if you don't mind me saying, Michelle, but I mean, you know, prior to camels, you'd been raising kids, you know, been, you know, house mum and or running the house and, um, you know, assisting your, your husband with his business and things in, like that, and the farm as well. So you'd had a busy life beforehand. Um, 
and then uh, you had the idea of um, of getting this camel dairy happening. And since then, we've seen you win gold medals and all sorts of stuff. Um, um, I don't think you get a gold medal, but it's a gold award. No, no, she award. has. She's oh. got a golden award. Oh, yeah. you do? Yeah, you do actually award. get a medal? I, well, I think it's, you know, like a, yeah, a, a symbolic a gold, <laughs> gold medal. Gold plated. <laughs> gold medal or awards anyway. But, uh, yeah, she's done exceptionally well, worked damn hard for what she's achieved. And... Um, and, uh, you know, all kudos to you, Michelle, and, yeah, we get where you're coming from. It really is a testimony to anything you put your heart and soul in and anything you fully believe in. I mean, we all work hard. You know, we all might have our day jobs or, you know, you know our income-producing activities. But like uh, Coralie said from France, when you have a passion behind you, you feel unstoppable, mm. you know, unstoppable. You feel like um, that it, no, it doesn't matter how many crossroads, how many bumps, how many cliffs you fall off, that you ain't going to stop. Mm. And we can say that because we've been, we continue to go through all of those things. Mm. And, but it's like, we have a message to share here. And this is about honoring the camel for what it is that camels crave connection. And we want to facilitate that connection mm. between human and camel mm. and ain't no one going to stop us. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've got one, another one from France. I do, yeah. I was awesome. surprised that a few came from France, but because it's not—I mean, there's not a lot of camels there. No. Um, so I would love to explore France one day with its mm. little camel culture that it has. So, um, this is from Sarah, and she's all, Sarah from also from France, and this is her story of Momo, um, as she said for World Camel Day on June twenty second. Um, Momo returned to returned to my life two and a half years ago. Since childhood, I was fascinated by these nice giants, and I learned a lot before committing to owning one. Great going. That's really good. Here in France, it is not so easy to have a camel. My husband gifted me a camel for my 40th birthday. Aww, oh, I wow. wish I got a camel for my birthday. you got to reach 40. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I went to see him when he was very young and he arrived at my home at the age of one. Mm. With him, I learned that you cannot get anything with strength, but with a good dose of patience and love, you can really... Good, with a good dose of patience and love, you can really get everything, even if sometimes it really has the head of a camel. <laughs> yeah, we know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It was probably referring to what a lot of people think is stubborn. Stubborn, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say, but I didn't want to stay it for the sake of the camel. Um, he, the camel, is the one that is that has really changed my life. It's just beautiful. He is a giant full of love and nonsense, and I never get bored with him. Sarah and Momo from France. Wow, how Aww. about that, eh? Gosh, uh, this is just wrecking my heart here. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's one. Uh, this is the last one I think that we've got for you today. Um, of course, it's you know, like how many millions of people that are involved with camels around mm -hmm. the world. Um, so these are just some stories, let's face it. But this guy, this guy um, is really interesting. We, we started to follow his story um, some time back when uh, he was... Um, was getting involved and um, you know just keeping you know looking at it when he was posting up stuff on social media or whatever and uh, and then uh, there was occasionally a news report um, that would filter through and uh, we're, we're talking about Shane Conway and he reached out to us to tell his story which I had also not know like I obviously had known that he did this special walk which we'll go into mm. soon but I did not know his backstory yeah mm. no it's, a, it's a, I mean everyone's got that sort of as you mm -hmm. call it the backstory and I love um, them yeah. I love those stories yeah okay so it's Shane Conway here from Desert to Ocean Camel Walk Facebook page yeah all right, so if, if you want to have a look at it, uh, the Desert to Ocean Camel Walk is the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I was drinking my life away. Alcohol drinking. Right, alcohol yep. drinking. And my uncle, Ash, asked me if I wanted to train and walk camels. <laughs> huh? Yeah, amazing. Okay. Um, it's like the heavens have spoken. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, good old Uncle Ash, eh? Um, He's um he's got a lot to yeah you got a lot to thank him for actually Shane on no, no doubt uh, I said I have a broken pelvis now here we go I have a broken pelvis and was using a walking stick at the time and he said walk it off <laughs> so I turned up 
and started training camels with him. All yeah. right. So you must have actually been, I mean, I'm only assuming, Shane, you must have been ready for a change. Mm. Um, you can't be drunk around wild camels. How? God, isn't that true? So, <laughs> so I stopped drinking and started training. Maybe that's why we're never drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Except for that one night. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, that was three years ago now. I don't drink as much. I might have a beer or two in the afternoon, but I don't get drunk every day. And I also don't need a walking stick. Wow. Eh? Like, hello, miracle. Mm-hmm. Camels, hello. We walk the camels. Now, here we go. This is what he ended up doing. We walked the camels. We trained from west of Bula to Rainbow Beach. All right, so there was this in Queensland in Australia. Over 2,000 kilometres with 18 wild camels. Along the journey... We stopped into every school and nursing home we could find to share the camels. Thanks so much. And again, like, I mean, camels change a damn life, yeah. you know? Like, if you're really open to that possibility of what camels can offer, and honestly, this is what my whole book is going to be about, is how, you know, the camel has been my guru, and I will often, you know, think, what would a camel do? <laughs> you know, because... Um, or I'll spend some time with a camel just to just to feel because they are very grounded creatures and uh, like somebody said I can't remember who in in one of the stories we read is that they make you feel relaxed Mm. and they do because they're very grounded creatures they're they're like steadfast in their groundedness they're like well this is my life purpose is to just to be slow and steady and, and grounded and um that's that's definitely one thing I can appreciate appreciate about them yeah for sure no thanks for that Shane I mean you know I've actually heard other stories of a similar sort of nature Um, and look perhaps I could even include myself in that too Mm. Um, but yours was a mental thing rather than a like yours was an emotional need rather than a physical oh yeah for sure but uh, you know like I can understand um, uh, what he's saying there you can't be drunk around wild camels Mm. Um, so you know that actually changes your life to start with Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know whether, you know, you'd, well, well, put it this way, I mean, like, you know, lives changed, and mine certainly did, and um, and uh, I don't think I could go back to the lifestyle that I had beforehand. Mm. Um, and there was that one time where you were drunk, but there was an accident that followed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, tangles. oh, God, yeah, look, I've tried it, don't worry, I've tried it on. <laughs> I have tried it on and uh, made the mistake and won't do it again. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. You make mistakes in life and move on, mm. you know. You pick yourself up, dust yourself off. But isn't that a beautiful... yourself and get on with it. Isn't that a beautiful thing, though, that camels can just, you know, a, a wild or a feral camel, a camel straight out of the, you know, the, the arid zones is, you know, yeah, they're, they're full on and you have mm. to be witty, you have to be on guard and... Mm. Um, it, it, it also it, it brings up all these uh, emotions and physical abilities that you thought you never had or mm. you've never experienced before. Mm. And that is such a beautiful thing to be part of. And I highly recommend anybody who has not had experience with literally a camel that's come out of a non-domestic situation, the wild, uh, the arid zones, wherever, to experience that at least once in your life if you're a, if if you're you a serial camel lover. Yeah. Um, and we will create those opportunities for people in the future because it is absolutely life transformation. It sure yeah. is. Yeah, it's an amazing process and, uh, and it, it's never failed us. It'll help, it, it, I feel like it just brings you to your knees in a meta, in a metaphorical sense. Mm. Um, it brings you to your knees, it cracks you wide open mm. and you just question everything about what you know mm. and how you feel in, in all the positive ways. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah. No, it's a fantastic stories and like I've said, we've got thousands of people, you know, out there in the world that, uh, you know, have got all sorts of stories and backstories and things like that. Um, and, you know, what's on the face. Um, maybe that's why they call it Facebook. I've just realised. Oh, my God. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all face value. Um, but anyway, um, you know, there's face value of, uh, you know, who we think people are, but really, I mean, you know, we don't know. Mm. Uh, we don't know at all. Well, that's what our job here on the podcast is to interview those people and bring out their stories. Because, Absolutely. Um, story, I've always, I've always said this, and I've even said it in some um, magazine articles that were written about me. And the, the part that seems to touch people the most, I'm like, stories heal. 
Mm. You've got to tell your story. Mm. It doesn't matter how you tell it, whether that be through writing, speaking, and or you know, not not as in being on a stage speaking, but just talking amongst people, or you know, bringing it up when you feel like it's a good moment to bring it up. Stories absolutely heal, and it should never be anything to be ashamed of. And mm. in fact, if you feel like there's things in your life that you are ashamed of, then you know, make it so that it's a story and it's like, well, I was like this and now I'm not and this is because of X, Y, Z and a lot of cases it's Well, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we're all part of the one species, we're all part of the same family called the human Mm. family Mm. and, uh, and, you know, really we should be all here to help each other uh, through whatever and, you know, Mm -hmm. if we can do that and uh, everyone, you know, or or anyone can do that, you know, through the use of animals um, as well and have that connection, Mm -hmm. whether it be dog, cat, pig, you know, bird, chook, um, chicken, in case if you didn't know what chicken was. <laughs> um, uh, camel. I mean, mm. you know, um, you know, nature always has an answer. Absolutely. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, there was... I have to read that quote on a on another podcast. I'm reading a book at the moment. That it says that exact thing is that nature always has the answer. Mm, mm. Um, oh, so beautiful. And I, I just really want to do a shout out to all the camel people out there. Whether you, um, you know, to all the camel lovers, and that does, you know, it doesn't exclude you if you don't own a camel because you still love them and mm. you're helping the camel be known for what they truly are, which is a magnificent being that um, craves connection, Mm. not this cantankerous, biting, spitting, kicking thing. Yeah, sure, they can do all those things, but all in all, they want connection. Mm. And whether that be from their own herd, people in their herd, (laughs) camels in their herd, or a human connection, Mm. um, they crave that. And that is what we're here on this planet to to facilitate is mm. is that connection and um so i want to thank you mm. so much firstly for listening to this podcast because yeah. that alone just proves that you're a serial camel lover um and you know if you own them thank you for owning them particularly if you're in australia because mm. you know you've rescued a camel more than likely from mm. being shot out in the desert um that is that's a big deal mm. um all our camels have come from the desert mm-hmm. um yeah, so they're all rescued camels, if you'd like to say that word. Um, and I just, I have a high appreciation for, for camel love, camel lovers. And um, so thank you so much for being here. Totally, yeah. And, no of course. Happy Camel Day. Happy World Camel Day. That's Make so sure nice. you share this with your friends and tell them all about, you know, how amazing camels are and, you know, that they should listen to this and actually see how great these animals are. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, you guys have a great week. Okay. See you on the next one. Righto. Bye. Cheers. Bye. If you like this information we've just shared with you, you'll be sure to love the free camel ebooks and training videos that we're giving away. We're giving away two camel ebooks, Introduction to Camels and Introduction to Camel Training. Plus, in our bonus camel training videos, we take you through training and handling camels built on connection and trust. And we also share how to understand a camel's way of thinking. This is gold information that you don't want to miss. So be sure to sign up now to get your free ebooks and training videos over at camelconnection.com.